today we're taking a look at the Jane Davenport Neutrals palette. I picked this up at Michael's with a 50% off coupon. And I wanted to point out that if you are a fan of Jane Davenport art supplies, craft supplies, they are going for really, well, by the time you guys get to see this, this may not, no longer be true. But right now, as of February 9th, 2018, uh, they're going for really inexpensive on Amazon, like half the price they go for at Michael's and like uh, somewhere between a half and a third of what they go on her shop. So if you're interested in picking some of these up, trying some of them, really good price on Amazon right now. You can get this palette for $15-ish. And this is the neutral palette. There are 12 colors. It comes in a gold tin. You guys may have seen me review the, uh, I won't say the brights palette. It comes in the teal tin. It's a very snarky review. I will warn you guys. This one's gonna be less snarky because I know what I'm getting into. We are basically going to be seeing uh, Prima Marketing level quality from these. And I will try to keep my makeup snark to a minimum. Jane Davenport, the Color Institute Neutral Palette, includes three primaries and a specially selected set of colors. And then Paint Till You Faint, which I still, I still hate it. Um, so here is a area, it's on like coated cardstock. So if you wanna get an accurate swatch for your watercolors, I really recommend you go with watercolor paper cut to size. Um, but the colors inside are mango, apple, blueberry, dove, unicorn, raven, vitamin C, sand, buff, spice, kiss, kiss, and cocoa. And I'm still not a fan of these color names, but the only one that really makes me cringy is kiss, 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 kiss is really bad. All right, hello artist. This palette of fine watercolors features three primaries so you can mix any color and some of my favorite hues. Use the reverse of this card to make a handy reference. I hope this fine little set of watercolors brings you big joy. Join me at janedavenport.com for painting tips, techniques, and art making lessons. Heart, Jane Davenport. And then there's a little illustration here. So there is some validity in that. Um, I would not say only three primaries will allow you to mix any color you want. You have warm primaries, you have cool primaries. And I actually have a really cool video on mixing and painting with the Daniel Smith Essential Six. And if Daniel Smith calls it Essential Six, it's definitely the Essential Six. Um, and they have three warm primaries, three cool primaries. And you really can get an impressive range from that. So let's take a look. We have our, and I swear, these little palettes are very cute. Um, I like it when Prima did it. I like these. They come in like really pretty colors. I mean, they're very cute. Um, and for 15 bucks, if you're getting it half off or if you're getting it from Amazon and you're able to take advantage of the deal, it's almost worth it for the palette alone. Plus they come individually wrapped like little candies in their own half pans. So I'm going to, ooh, these are like really secured in. My other ones weren't this well secured in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna free them all from the prison that contains them, i.e. all this wrapping. And I'm not a super fan of all this wrapping um, because it comes wrapped in paper and then it comes wrapped in plastic. And the plastic is to prevent it from getting, um, absorbing moisture from the atmosphere and kind of getting ruined. But it's still a lot of trash. And uh, when you take into account that this comes in a and a sleeve, a cardboard sleeve. It's just, it gets to be a lot of trash. So I'm going to unbox, whoa, one for you. And then I'll do the rest as a time lapse. So we're gonna do mango. And I have nails now. Maybe I can get into this easier. Or maybe the nails will make it harder. All right, so that's mango. It's got a very rough texture on it. Um, I still don't know why the Jane Davenport watercolors like this. These are the American Crafts Jane Davenport. She's actually got deals with like four different companies. Um, she has a deal with Schminka. She has a deal with Daniel Smith. She has a deal with Peerless. And I think there's somebody else she's got a deal with. It's a, besides American Crafts. It's a little bit, it's a little bit intense. That's uh, a lot. It, and I think it can cause some confusion if you're a fan of her work because she's got so many branded things, but they're all at different levels, but they all claim to be kind of for artists. I just, you know, whatever. It's your business, lady. So, and that's Apple. Might as well unwrap while I chit-chat, right? 
and then I have nothing to say once I start unwrapping. Yeah. So I still, like I said, don't know. Also has a very, very rough texture. You want to be careful um, if you're using nice sable brushes. You want to you want to activate these by adding a drop of water first. Um, otherwise, they can really chew up your brushes. If you're using water brushes, if you're using synthetics, it's not as big a deal. So these are called her petite palettes. They go for $32.74 on her site. And since my last Jane Davenport petite palettes review, uh, she's actually added the pigment information to the site. And I'm gonna go ahead and read those off as I unwrap. So Mango has a light fastness of two asterisks, two stars, which is, eh, I, I think all of these are probably gonna have a eh, light fastness. I would love to, um, one of my patron goals is to get a waterproof, weatherproof box, like clear plastic box, and just do some light testing with some of the things I think are kind of dubious. And that's way up there on my Patreon goals. So Mango is pigment PY83. Apple is PR1, no, 112, and then PR170, so it's a dual pigment. Actually, it looks like a lot of this set is signal pigment, which is actually really good. Um, although the light fastness is kind of like really crummy for single pigment. And I, I wonder if it's some of the additives that have been, I'm just assuming uh, because uh, these are the sort of paints that usually go on kind of opaque. And that means there's a lot of optical brighteners in them. Uh, let's see. Blueberry is PB29. Dove is PBK9, PBW, I'm sorry, PW9 and PB29. So, and uh, the, these little plastic wrappers, they're really static clingy, so they really wanna hang on to your skin. Unicorn, which is white, and I think it's like the second white. Is this a white that has any special properties? I don't know, it looks like, look at this. I don't know if I can get my camera to focus, but it looks like a sponge and it feels like sandpaper. It is super rough. Let's see, I can just pop it out. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's got the texture of a pumice stone. <laughs> That is really unusual in my experience with watercolors. Um, I've literally never encountered a brand that has that effect other than premium marketing's watercolors. So if you guys know why they're doing that, I would love to hear it. It's probably a lack of glycerin, but that's just me guessing. Uh, so Unicorn, which is white, and I'm pretty sure the Brights set also has a white. I'm gonna go dig that up after I finish unwrapping and talking at y'all. PW6, Raven Black, uh, P PBK9, so the K I think refers to black. Um, and everything on the first row, the first six, has a light fastness of, well, half of the colors have a light fastness of two and half have a light fastness of three. So blue, white, and black, blueberry, unicorn, and raven have a light fastness of three. On the next row, we have vitamin C, which is like a red orange, almost a scarlet. I would go, I would call it a scarlet. So vitamin C is not what I would have, whatever. Doesn't matter, nobody asked me. Uh, is light fastness, of, light fastness of two, PO13. Sand is has light fastness of two, and it's got two pigments, PY6, PY42. Buff, wait, no, this is buff. Uh, has a light fastness of three, and it's three pigments, PW6, PO13, PY42. These are all meant to be, these are meant to be like, well, these three. See, they say it's a set full of neutrals, and it's really not. Um, there's like three skin tones and then a bunch of reds and oranges. Um, so, sorry. Wow, I did just unwrap. Wait, what? Now I'm all, I got two buffs in this set. Look at, y'all. So I'm supposed to get buff and I'm supposed to get spice. And spice is like a darker, it's kind of like a burnt sienna kind of color. Instead, I get two buffs with different colors on the package. Awesome, quality control, A++++. So got two of the same, A+, awesome. 
Which is really disappointing because I was literally just commenting that there aren't as many neutrals in this set as you would think. Um, and I got two of the same neutral instead of three different neutrals. Kiss Kiss has a light fastness of three and it's PR 101. I would bet you anything that's like an alizarin crimson. Maybe a Venetian red. We'll find out. It looks like all nice and pinky red. We'll see. And then lastly is Coco with a light fastness. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. That's Venetian red. Okay, so that is a neutral. It does not reflect the color there at all. Then Coco has a light fastness of two. It's PR101, PY14, PBK9. And I will link this in the description, but I'm not writing all that out. You guys can look that up if you don't believe me. So there, I actually unwrapped all of our colors on camera while talking at y'all. I'm really disappointed that I got two buffs. Um, I might send one to my friend Kabocha just because I don't need two buffs. I'm probably never gonna go through this entire set. And that way I have a big, nice, ugly hole to remind me that they sent me two of the same color. And I know, I know, mistakes happen, I know. Um, and for 15 bucks, mistakes happen. So, for realsies this time, I'm going to, maybe not, I'm gonna go find out how many of these watercolor sets, I think there's four now, but I wanna double check. I'm gonna find out how many watercolor sets there are, and I will tell you about those as I tape these down. I can't tell you guys though how much I hate her site. It is well, janedavenport.com. It's well designed, like it's pretty, and it takes a million years to load. And it loads between every page in the shop. And then there's like random pop-ups. Do you want to sign up for the newsletter? And <laughs> it's like, hmm, that should happen right when you get on the site, not when you've been on the site for five minutes on the same computer that you signed up for the newsletter through last time. Like cookies or something should remember that. So there are, oh, wow. I really thought there were four sets, but her bundle on her site only has the two. I'm gonna keep digging. Did they pull the other palettes? I'm seeing two on Amazon. They're back at full price or close to full price. And then I see Glitzy, which I'd been kinda, it's the third. It's got like a dark teal kind of cover. Um, I really thought there were four. Uh, anyway, Glitzy has like these darker colors and I thought it would be um, like sparkle colors with a name like Glitzy, right? But it's all mermaid puns and some of it, well, no, because Bright's isn't a mermaid pun and Neutral's isn't a mermaid pun. So Glitzy's like the only one that's not a mermaid pun and it doesn't have any glitter colors in it. It's just, <sighs> I don't understand. I don't understand. But that's not even, I don't think that's even on the Jane Davenport site anymore. So I wonder what's going on. I, 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 I know pe other people like these sets. I don't care for them because um, the pr they're very similar to the Prima Marketing sets. And I like the color selections in the Prima Marketing sets better. And the Prima Marketing sets cost about the same or less. I mean, you can't just run down to Michael's and get them. But you can get them on Amazon for super, well, not super cheap anymore. It comes and goes. Sometimes they're really cheap. But... I'm not, like, I, I'm not busting down doors to buy these. And I believe, unless they took that off, I think you can get the individual paints for these open stock on Jane Davenport. Y'all can hear me checking right now. Yeah, you can totally get, you can also buy empty watercolor pans, although I really wouldn't do that through I would get those on like Amazon or at Jerry's Art Rama just because it's more cost effective to do that so pulling up on her slow site yeah you can totally get the individual wow okay all right so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve yeah for reals um on her site you can only get half pans from bright and from neutral, so y'all are just gonna have to endure this. Buzzy Ladybug Butterfly, 70s Eyeshadow, Mermaid Jiminy, Best Friend, Fairy Tale Frida, Mystic Royal Ink, and then the ones in this set, Mango Apple Blueberry Dove, Unicorn Raven, Vitamin C, Sand Buff Spice, Kiss Kiss Cocoa. So I could totally order that missing spice off of off of the website. And I mean, three, 386 a half pan is not the worst. I mean, for the, the quality of these, I'm not excited about it, but like for professional grade half pans, you're looking to pay from seven to $10, just, you know, 
it's cheaper if you fill them yourself from the tube, but if you're buying half pans pre-filled. Now, these are also really similar to some that have been in my Amazon uh, art supplies to test wish list, and it's like an unbranded set of like half pans. I can link that for you guys, but I don't know. I'm so curious, but I have a hard time digging up this kind of information and people don't respond to emails because they probably don't want to answer those questions. So like, I am sure there's like a shared manufacturer in China or a shared recipe or something. And I mean, that's not really unscrupulous or suspicious. This kind of stuff happens all the time. You're really seeing it happen with alcohol markers right now. Um, there's like a very, very common body type for inexpensive round alcohol markers that are kind of like the style file markers in terms of design. The, the Blick Illustrator markers I reviewed here on the channel uh, use that body type. So it's not an unusual thing and it's not even necessarily an unscrupulous thing. It's kind of a cost saving thing, but it also means that your product isn't offering any innovation. It's not anything new. Um, so it's kind of like, okay, well then why buy, why buy you? I tape them down with a bit of washi tape just to help them stay in place. So we're gonna look at the, we're gonna do color comparisons. I know, especially with craft brands, you shouldn't really rely on what the swatch looks like. And now you would usually write the names on these and I'm just really remiss. So mango, apple, blueberry, Dove Gray, it's just Dove, but Dove Gray is a more common name. Unicorn. Wow, I'm not even letting y'all see them now. Raven. So Raven, Unicorn, Dove, Blueberry, Apple, Mango. And I'm gonna toss all those because I don't need those. Vitamin C, which looks a lot more red. This is more like scarlet, almost a very dark orange. Could go either way. Sand. Buff. The spice that they didn't send me because they sent me two buffs. Kiss Kiss, which is a Venetian red. It's a nice, it's a really nice color. And cocoa. All right, so. I am gonna clean my dirty, dirty, dirty work area up. So messy, because I actually work here. And grab some water. And I'm also gonna go grab the brights palette and we can do some comparisons. Okay, so neutrals and brights. You guys can totally check out my snarktastic review of the brights by clicking this card here. I'm warning you, it's very snarky. A lot of people did not like it. Which is, I mean, that's fine, that's fair. You don't like the snark, that's cool. So, we've got neutrals, and I always kind of considered gold a neutral. I know that's kind of like um, more of a fashion <laughs> decision than an art decision, but I've always considered gold kind of a neutral. So fair to, fair play. But with a gold tin like this, wouldn't you think they'd put some sparkly gold in there? Right, same thing with glitzy, just kind of, I don't know, a little misleading. And then this is brights in a very bright little tin. Got my swatches, and I'm gonna, ooh, they, <laughs> I, yeah, I know I use double stick tape on these and they did not stick. It is very, it's been very cold this winter and it's kind of screwing everything. I really thought there was a white in here. There is no white, white in this set. So that is my mistake. Do not trust memory. This is why we double check things though. So there isn't a white in here. I'm thinking of the Prima Marketing palette, which has a white in its bright set. So my mistake, Mia Copa. And get everything kind of back in order because I am nitpicky like that. I don't know why. I didn't write the names on these either. Sorry. All right, so. And then faint till you paint or paint till you faint, which I, I really hate, I really hate that. I, paint watercolor comics. I literally paint eight hours a day. I have never fainted from painting, but I also don't huff fumes from my paints. Not that your paint, your watercolor should have fumes, but I, I don't know. So I don't really know how this paint till you faint thing is gonna happen. Are we doing like the Victorian swooning? I just love painting so much. I have to swoon. Is that what we mean here? So I am going to 
put a little bit of water on each of these and I'm activating these colors. I was really hoping for something sparkly. I don't know why, I'm in a sparkly mood. Vitamin C, sand. I'm really disappointed though that I didn't get spice. I am, I'm one of those people who like, I like to mix my own skin tones and if you watch my tutorials, you'll see that, but I'm also very intrigued by premixed skin tones because it makes it accessible for people and it does save some time and it does save some space. So I'm gonna give these a second to activate and then we're gonna swatch on here and then we're gonna swatch in this and this is my Canson XL Mixed Media Book and I'm using it as like a swatch repository. So hopefully that will get a good idea of what the colors look like. I may even, for comparative purposes, swatch the brights right underneath it. Probably not in this video though. And I Googled, what was the deal with Jane Davenport removing some of those petite palettes? No dice, you guys. Maybe my Google just doesn't wanna tell me. Maybe it's hiding something, keeping secrets from me. But if you guys know, I want I want the, the scoop. Give me the skinny. I gotta know all the, oh, why am I doing that? I could be, I could be smart and double dip. Ooh, actually mangoes are, <laughs> that's a nice color. A very sunny yellow. I will bet you guys big money these are very opaque for what they are. I bet my water is gonna get super nasty too. So I'm gonna do regular swatches and then I'm gonna do opacity swatches, which are important. That's a decent, okay. All right, so our red, our yellow, and our blue. Our yellow and our blue are warm. Our red is kind of cool. I know it's weird to say about a red, but it's a cooler red. No, I'm sorry. My mistake. Warm, warm, warm. Never mind. Womp womp. Had a brain fart there. So, at least if you're mixing people, those colors will usually work for people's skin tones. So, and I am just going to. Looks like it might be a nice thick white. I'm gonna have to do an opacity test with the white because this is not gonna tell any of us anything. My water is already, let me show you guys, muddy after five swatches. So that's a lot of optical brighteners. And I am working on a blog post about why you should care about that. But the TLDR is if you do a lot of layers like I do, if you paint watercolor comics, for example, or if you do more rendered watercolor illustrations, or you wanna do glazes, or you wanna do underglazing, or you wanna do tones, or just basically anything that isn't just one or two layers of watercolor. You kinda of wanna avoid optical brighteners because they make translucent colors uh, transparent, uh, opaque, my, my mistake. They make translucent colors opaque, very muddy, tend to reactivate, just kind of a pain in the booty. And if you don't do a lot of layers, if you mostly use your watercolors for sketching, that kind of thing, nothing wrong with that. Not making a judgment call. These will work better. Like, so if you wanna paint a lot of florals or you only wanna do one layer for a face, so you're gonna use white to blend out the color, that sort of thing, um, they're gonna work a lot better for you. Oh no, Venetian Red, you're so full of op optical brighteners. You look really weird to me. <sighs> oh, I didn't do gray. How could I forget my cat's gray? All right, so just about done with our basic first level. Oh yeah, Coco's got a lot of optical brightener in it too. Wah. Now I really wish, I mean, I will keep saying this. I'll keep saying it, but I'm really regretting not having buff included because it would have been very useful for me. So I want to use something that will be waterproof when dry. And I keep like a majillion pens around here. I'll just use a Sharpie, why not? And we're gonna do an opacity test with that. And I'm gonna disappear. I'm gonna swatch these puppies here so it's all in one place and we can kind of talk about things. Just wanted to share this with you guys. So I just realized that you get your cool primaries in the bright set. So if you own both 
sets, you will get warm primaries and cool primaries and you really will be able to mix almost any color you want. There's some colors like certain violets, you're just, it, either you're gonna waste a lot of paint trying to get to that color or you're not gonna be able to get to that color. There are some colors you just can't mix, like opera rose, you just can't mix. Um, it does seem like some of those holes are kind of filled by the other colors included. What I'm curious about now is I wouldn't mind getting my hands on Glitzy. I don't wanna necessarily buy another, especially because it's going for 21 right now on Amazon. I wouldn't necessarily have a problem popping down 15, but I buy so many watercolor sets, it's hard to justify having all of these. Um, but, words. I wouldn't mind getting a look at what's in Glitzy, see what it has to offer, see what's different from these sets. You get a nice dioxine kind of purple here in the brights. I knew I said I wasn't gonna swatch in front of you guys, and then I do it. I do what I want, y'all. Anyway, so um, basically, from what I can see, minus spice, I know. I know, I'm a broken record. If you own both sets, you have a pretty decent color gamut, but you just spent $30 for 24 colors and they're not super high quality and you could get the Holbein 18 color set, which I have, a, if I don't have the review up, it's being edited, it's recorded. Um, the Holbein, uh, you can get their 18 color set for $25 and it's much higher quality and you can, they're five milliliter tubes, so you will need to get a pan, but I don't know. It's like one of those situations where it's like, yes, you could buy these and have them now, or you can invest a little bit and spend a little bit of time preparing it and you're gonna get something of better quality, but do you need the better quality? Is that gonna suit the kind of stuff you wanna do? I mean, it's really a your mileage may vary. All I can do is speak to my experience, which I think the whole Holbein set is lovely. It comes with a pre-mixed peachy skin tone, um, if that's your jam. I like to mix my own generally. The colors are really pretty. I would almost recommend the Magello set, which is more expensive. It's 25, seven milliliter tubes. Um, it's $41, but the colors are beautiful. I'm so excited about that set. So, you know, all I can do is speak to you guys. From my experience, the kind of watercolor I do, I had someone re recently on YouTube say that what I do isn't even art which is like, okay, like legit, there are people who don't consider illustration a form of art and there are people who don't consider comics a form of art. So, you know, like, whatever. But uh, I, do have an M <laughs> I do have an MFA, okay? I went to SCAD and got my, my paper, my very expensive piece of paper. So there's something there and I've been reviewing art supplies for like 10 years now, not here on YouTube, but over at natosoup.blogspot.com. So like, you know, Whatever caveats that brings. Yeah, it looks like most of these are gonna be at least semi-opaque. Um, you know, take keep that in mind. That's why I post videos so that you guys can look at what I do and decide if what I have to say is a good fit for you. And maybe it's not. But for, for me, the way I paint, you know, I did, I did spend my money on these, but part of that is because I, you know, I never liked playing Pokemon. It always felt kind of like dog fighting to me, and I know that's sacrilege. But I always in I enjoyed the show and I enjoyed the card game, which shouldn't make any sense, right? Um, the whole idea of collecting one of everything, testing one of everything, having that knowledge is intensely uh, attractive to me. So I will, I will accumulate dumb things, test them here, and then rehome them once I have decided it's either not a good fit for me or I know somebody who it would work better for, or I've decided to declutter. So. Oh, I know a lot of talking to be like your mileage may vary. Look at the look at the swatches, look at the scans, keep an eye out for my field tests and decide for yourself whether or not these work for you. Um, I see people on Instagram who really make these work and they do some really beautiful stuff, but they paint completely differently than I do. So I am going to let these dry. I did swatch both sets. Now I think it's good because now we have a side-by-side -side comparison of the two sets. I don't have glitzy, so I can't do glitzy. Um, I would have loved to, and then you guys could decide. You can also get the pans open stock 
and there's room down the middle of both of these sets. Actually, on my dirty, dirty, dirty desk, I have some Meaden half pans that I I bought uh, little thir no 24 pan sets for the Holbein and Magello set tests. But these are some leftover from the Holbein. Look, you can fit like six, I would say, down each row. So you could buy. Um, you could buy the open stock pans. You could use whatever pans you want to use. You could fill it with your favorite colors from a tube and put them in. And that way, you know, you can have more colors too. So I'm going to let these dry and then I'll check back in with you guys. All right, my friends, these swatches have dried. At the top is the neutral set in its golden tin. At the bottom is the bright set in its pastel bright teal set. And I like how I turned that over even though the paints inside are still wet. As you guys can probably see, the white is actually a warm white, which is kind of unusual. I have found that with washes, they actually tend to be kind of cool and weird. So the white might be worth scavenging out. Um, and as you can also see, the colors are all fairly opaque. Same goes down here. That usually indicates the use of optical brighteners. Like I said earlier, it really makes those colors pop also really makes those colors muddy. Not good if you like doing lots of translucent washes, lots of translucent glazes. If you really like to build up and develop your color layer after layer, these are not gonna be a good fit for you. However, if you want your color bright, you want your color now, and you're probably only gonna do one or two layers, these could be great. These could be great for hand letterers. These could be great for people who do those beautiful floral sketches like on Instagram, very loose, very gestural. These could be great for card makers who just wanna do one or two layers um, and really love the bright color and really love the easy form factor, the accessibility. I'm not saying these are a terrible product. I'm not saying these aren't for you. I still have a field test to do with the neutral set. You guys might hear me. <laughs> You won't hear me curse because I don't curse on my channel, but you might hear me struggle with not cursing. Uh, so that could be fun. And it might, it might get snarky because I may, I may try to paint to these paint strengths, which isn't really fair, but it would demonstrate how to use them. I may try to paint to how I like to paint and then we're gonna really see the torture begin. That's gonna be a hard one for me. Um, that might get snarky. If I go, if I paint in my, ah, I cannot word today. If I paint in my sort of method. So before I say goodbye, I am actually gonna do a little bit of a demonstration for you guys since my last petite palette review caused a lot of consternation. I'm gonna kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about so you guys can see and and no, it's always good to know. We're gonna do the neutrals palette, or neutral palette. Oh, oh, I was dumb. I put it away wet. That's okay. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, it's gonna be like we're painting a person. I'm not actually painting a person, but it's gonna be like that. I'm gonna start with some skin tones. All right, we're gonna use some sand. Maybe have it a little more intense over here. We're gonna blend it out over here. Then we're gonna grab some buff. Kind of blend them into each other. Do a little more buff there. Gonna grab some of what they call blueberry, but it's kind of like an ultramarine or cerulean blue, blend that out a little bit, grab a little bit of apple. And this is not watercolor paper, this is mixed media paper. It's about the weight of cardstock. And I have found that painting on watercolor paper tends to be, tends to give me better results, but this is just a test. We still have the field test coming up. I'll paint on watercolor paper then. Let's see, what else do I wanna grab? I wanna grab some kiss kiss, kiss kiss, fall in love. Baby, you're my love. And then we're gonna grab some cocoa. And we're gonna grab some vitamin C because everybody's getting the flu right now. 
need to be healthy, need to be in top arting condition so we can make beautiful things and make the world a better place. I'm gonna grab some mango. And then some apple, mix those. Actually, while we're at it, we'll do a little color mixing because we're here. So we'll do some mango and some apple. And I'm just doing on the page mixing. Then we're gonna do some mango and some blueberry. And we get like this really kind of awkward olive green and that's the best you're gonna get because we're mixing warm yellow it's actually almost an orange so it's almost the complementary color to this blue then we're gonna grab some vitamin C and we're gonna grab some of that blue and we're gonna get a kind of a gray brown like a dove color then we're gonna grab some of this red apple 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 and some of that blueberry, blue, 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 bloobs, and get a decent purple. And let's see. Grab that yellow, grab some vitamin C, and get a mid orange. And then we're gonna let these dry, and then we're gonna paint. Oh, oh wait, no. Okay, we're gonna grab some dove. And then some black, I mean raven. And then we're gonna grab some mango. Some more mango. We're gonna grab some white and some blue. And we're gonna get kind of a pastel color that's actually very gray because of all those optical brighteners that we just added from the white. And we're gonna grab some white and we're gonna grab some black some more white and we're basically gonna get dove if we add enough white which kind of makes it a redundant color redundant color and then we're gonna grab some buff and we're gonna grab that white that has gray and we're gonna make zombie skin all right now we're gonna let it dry because we've made a mess we got lots of color on the page and uh, I want to demonstrate sort of how this is going to handle a little bit when we do wet over dry. So not everything is 100% dry, but everything is mostly dry. There's definitely some pooling there. So something I found interesting, and I don't know if I can capture it, I'm going to try, is there's interesting sedimentation going on. So yes, this is blue and red mixed together, but it's definitely areas that are, the blue kind of falls into the valleys, the red kind of stays on the peaks, right? Or, let me see if I can get it over there for you guys. My cat's trying to claw me up because he wants me to pay attention to him. Uh, this was the blue and the yellow, right? That olive green we ended up mixing. This is pretty much what you're gonna get with green to varying degrees. Um, you can definitely see though that it's a blue and a yellow. And same goes for this orange and this blue, right? In fact, it kind of looks very muddy already. But you hear him, he is upset that I'm trying to work with him on my lap. Claws just went into my hip, that hurts. So anyway, um, to be fair, if you're mixing in like a daisy palette, mixing in batch, that might not be something that pops up. You might be okay with it. I kind of like the look, but some people want clean color blends and they did, the Jane Davenport Spin Crew did kind of claim that you could mix any color with these three primaries and that's just not the case. You need six. So, right, we said we're gonna start doing some layer, right? All right, so layer, 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 blend, 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 blend. Painting with a cat on your lap who's trying to claw and get head pets is very distracting. Paint, 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 paint. Yes, I'm gonna make onomatopoeia for every gesture. Don't you guys do that? Blend, 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 blend. Oh, look, 
it started to kind of reactivate that blue. And it's kind of pretty like that, but it wouldn't look so pretty on a face. Uh, let's grab some keys keys. Layer, layer. I wonder if we can get it any darker than this. With Venetian red, you can usually get it pretty saturated. And Venetian red is very opaque on its own. So the fact that they added optical brighteners is just really disappointing. Blend, blend. Layer, layer. Glaze, 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 glaze. Because that's kind of what I'm doing. Actually, glazing would have more water. So glazing would be a very thin application of a color. So let's do that with dove gray. Let's do that with the red. Glaze, glaze, glaze. Oh man. Oh, it reactivated my red. How disappointing. I can't glaze with, with my gray. Let's try with a blue. Let's do it over on this red. Glaze, 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 glaze. Starting to pick up some of that red. Glaze, glaze, glaze. Oh, now it's kind of a purpley color. Well, I, I just wanted to do like a shadow on my red. Let us see. What else? What other habit can I wreck? Let's grab a sand and do it over on this. It pretty much entirely reactivates it. And in a test situation, you know it's all it's all good. Like it doesn't it doesn't really matter because we're playing around, like fine. Glaze, 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 glaze. Like it doesn't matter if it reactivates it, but I promise you when we do the field test, depending on whether or not I do one that showcases how to use these versus how I normally paint. Ugh, I'm I'm really wondering if I should do two field tests and then I kinda wanna scream. And then there's our brown, that's cocoa. Glaze, glaze, glaze. Oh, and then usually when I'm painting skin tones, I do kind of, I'm gonna really wanna water this down. I do like a blush color, that did not work. A blush color, a blush color. Let's, let's like ac accidentally over apply. Oh no, it's so dark. I need to use some water to help sort of Blend it out a little bit. Oh. And, again, I am using um, mixed media paper for this swatch demonstration, swatch palooza. And watercolor paper tends to behave better for watercolor than mixed media paper. Mixed media paper is a good jack of all trades, but it's not the master of any. You can do a lot with it but it's never gonna be a replacement for media design for the medium you're using. Oh, cat claws in the thigh. All right, so then let's say I want to do another layer. Let's mix a little bit of kiss kiss with a little bit of the sand and let's fall in love. For those of you who are really scratching your heads at what I'm saying, uh, I'm quoting Orin Host Club's opening, which is an anime. I'm quoting an anime opening. Glaze, 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 glaze. Let's grab some blue. Glaze, glaze, glaze. Cat claws. Let's put some blue over here. Glaze, glaze, glaze. Layer, 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 layer. Wet into wet blood. So you guys, can see the colors are really bright, really popping, really making a mess. Um, I'm gonna let these dry, and I think before I spend too much time just playing around with color on paper, I'm gonna go ahead and say goodbye to you guys. Goodbye! And thank you guys for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it amused you. And I hope you guys will check out my upcoming field test. I'm still trying to decide whether or not I wanna do what would be best for this palette or if I want to do what I would normally do. I don't know. Maybe you guys should let me know in the comments. The problem with that is by the time you see this, I see those comments, that field test will already be done. However, maybe if you guys suggest something counter to what I did, I can go back and do another one and that way we can cover both sides and everyone will be happy. I don't know. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful, useful, informative. If there is something I didn't cover that I can cover, let me know in the comments. You can find more information about Jane Davenport products at janedavenport.com. And um, 
some of the information can be harder to find, like, you know, what a- what is actually going into these palettes. And we know the pigment names, but we don't know the amounts. We don't know um, any other fillers, any any other binder, what binders they're using. Are they using glycerin or are they using gum arabic? Are they using something else? Um, what kind of optical brightener are they using? Are they using talc? Are they using chalk? Are they using zinc oxide? I mean, there's a lot of variables that we don't necessarily have access to because when it comes to art supplies, they're not necessarily required to disclose that. I think I could pull up, I think it's called an MSD or an MSDS, something like that. I can pull up that and see if there's any further clues if you guys are really, really interested in the makeup of these. Um, But I'll see you guys in the field test. Bye, guys!